All right, welcome back to Boring Reviews, and we have a special cricket-related review for you today. We are going to be checking out the documentary, Crossing the Line, but you know what? I'm a little froggy myself. Nick here. Gabe, the Night Watchman. Gabe, the winner. Gabe, Gaitone Day is back, baby. Woo, I'm feeling good about myself. Just saying, just saying, Melbourne Stars, what to know. Nick, continue. Can I just say, though, I was not on the stream, so take that. All right. We are going to check out – typically, we would do this on Cricket for Americans, our other channel, All About Cricket, but this is a this is a review. This is a documentary review for Crossing the Line, so we're throwing it here on Boring Reviews. We hope if you're from CFA, you're able to find it here. Like, oh, check this out. I forgot they had this channel. Who knows? But we're here. This is all about reviews and whatnot. Crossing the Line is a 55-minute or so documentary about – the events about the audacity about the cheating that happened at Cape Town by the Australians in when was it 2018? Is yeah. that correct? Not yeah. too long ago. Not this is like ago. right before we got into cricket, too, which is right. funny because I know you remember this game, but we had talked about, you know, is there cheating in cricket? This is a year ago or so. Is there cheating right. in cricket? And we had some react. No one ever cheats in cricket. It's never been done. And then all of a sudden we find out that Cape Town happened like six months earlier. What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's funny, right? I'm watching this documentary. And first of all, I think that what it really does that the show, although I loved it, this is part of what got us into cricket was watching uh, uh, um, the net, not Netflix, that's... um. Uh, the test on Amazon, right? That really was just amazing. And it got us into this world of cricket, right? Uh, I fell in love with some of these Australian play, uh, players. Uh, those of you that follow us on CFA Nation know I'm a huge Australian fan as well as West Indies, right? I'm from the Caribbean. But, you know, I, I fell in love with Smudge. I, I fell in love with a lot of these guys, um, Nathan Lyon and... This gives you a different perspective on it, right? It's funny how documentaries and filmmakers can really like like slant the view. Now, the first thing I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say is it put it into context because this was not really put into context for us, right? It was just that oh, there was a cheating scandal. That's kind of what just the test says, and you come in on the heels of it, right? You uh, of Steve Smith apologizing and having that breakdown, which I found really passionate and powerful right when he was crying and stuff like that up there but now you get the context of what had happened before the steve smith incident with uh 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 uh, uh was it rabada yeah it was with rabada which i'm like wait so this icc wanted to ban rabada two games for making contact because it's a gentleman's sport but the punishment that they doled out was two that was their ban was two games for cheating ICC, you suck. Are you kidding me? This just puts things into perspective. Our channel just okay? got closed down. Our channel just got closed down right now. And I am so glad you got to put up this disclaimer right now. The, okay, the views of Gabe are not the views, views of board review. <laughs> views of board review. Because disclaimer will be thrown on here. But I'm being honest. They made such a, bo- a, a big deal out of Robota getting in his personal space and, and uh, was it Viv Richards? Who was the announcer? Michael Holding that Michael said, Holden. "Yeah, even as a bowling you don't, bowler, you don't do that." No, you don't get right. in the space. You don't. I get that, but you wanted a two. They had to have a whole hearing about it. Two game ban for that, but for a huge cheating scandal caught on live on television where the guy and that was going to be a two game ban. You're ridiculous. Now, what it really did show me was the amount of respect I gained for Australia, Nick. It was their own uh, Australian cricket board that they suspended. And we knew that, but we didn't realize the pressure that went along with it. And the media, when would American media, if this had happened here, when this is the role media should play, right? They should be the arbiters of, of, of the truth. They should be the ones putting that, 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 that social pressure on. Here, if it was America, they'd make a million excuses for them, all right? Bill Belichick, anyone? Everybody does it. It's not in the rules. It's this. There's that. No. Australia right away. The fans right away. I fell in love with Australia even more. I said, this is unacceptable. Former captains, this is unacceptable. The prime minister. Prime minister watches cricket? 
You think the president watches baseball? gotta remember. All right, let me let me jump in here because I know you're just gonna go on for days and days. Let me jump in here. First of all, the man who loves to do the synopsis first, which no offense, not my favorite thing to do because it takes forever to do a synopsis. He just jumps right into it. So we're not doing a synopsis here. Either watch the trailer <laughs> documentary or you haven't. But remember, this is an international game, right? This is Australia. This is not the NFL. This is not the New England Patriots. This is the inter- so I would maybe I'm blind and naive. I would like to think that if American athletes represent America in an international contest were caught cheating, then yes, America would hold them accountable. I would like to think. I would like to think you're comparing NFL and individual sports. And I see you're doing your chin right here. Stop it. If it happens, you're, you're put on blast in front of the whole world right now. People are looking at you and how are you going to react? The ICC completely dropped the ball. You know, I understand there's a rule. You can't have any kind of physical contact. They did a beautiful job of making sure it's not a contact sport. There's no fighting whatsoever. There's no place for it. And I'm sorry, I don't buy Rabada's excuse. Like, I, I wasn't even aware I touched him. You got super close. If it, there's no, if you can get a two-game ban for just touching someone, it wasn't like, uh, or it wasn't like, a, uh, it was just he rubbed shoulders. If you get a two-game ban for that, that's like Don McNabb saying, I didn't know there was a tie in football. You got to be smarter. You got to be more aware. You can celebrate all you want. And it'd be different if Steve Smith, I kind of came into your space, but Steve Smith is just walking out and he got excited. Does he deserve a two game ban? Maybe because those are the rules. But when you're cheating, when you're cheating and you're purposely trying to cheat in another person's country, it doesn't even matter where the country you're at, but you're cheating. That should be a huge ban. I'm surprised it was only I, – I thought the ICC was very, very strict. Obviously, personal space is a bigger issue than cheating in the game. But this is the crazy thing, okay? This is the crazy thing. In this – we learned a whole lot in this documentary, a whole lot in 55 minutes. They say in this documentary that South Africa had not won a home test series against Australia since like the 1960s or something like that. Right. So – Australia comes there every time and slaps them around and wins that series. Australia wins the first match in this four-match series. Why in the world do they feel the need to cheat when you've been dominating? I mean, heaven forbid they win a series in their own home country, for crying out loud. Why do you feel the pressure in the second or the th- they got caught in the third match? I'm sorry. I'm not that that naive. I don't think that was the first time they tried that and they just oh. got caught, right? Oh. And not just that, but we'll talk about Stuart Broad and his comments where he's like, they just played us in the ashes and they won. Uh, hello? There was some reverse swing there. I gained a newfound respect for Stuart Broad because of that. Sorry to control. Oh, and he's getting a lot of hate. He probably got a whole lot of hate for saying that. But, I mean, I, I don't blame him. Like, they were just here and they had a lot of amazing reverse swing on a pitch that really doesn't allow too much reverse swing. You got to start thinking about a few things. But you're telling me they just concocted after winning the first match. Then they lost the second match. You think they just came with this idea like, okay, guys, plan B, get the sandpaper. And this guy, he had the audacity. There's cameras everywhere to sit there and shine it and then to put it. There's no reason for your hand to go in your pocket. No reason whatsoever. And then we've always seen the shot of like, it's almost like the bulge where he was putting the, the sandpaper in his pants. I'm always like, what's the deal with why are they always showing us that shot? Now I get it because seconds before he had put his hands, you can see a little of the sand. I mean, guy was caught red handed and Bancroft yeah. even said, once I saw it on the monitor, I knew I was screwed. I mean, he could said, you imagine okay. that? Like you right. had the audacity to cheat and then it's caught in the monitor and you know about it. And so you try to put it in your pants and when they come, Oh, it's just my sunglass case. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's crazy what happened. But, Gabe, my question to you, why do they feel the need to cheat? And let me preface this real quick. I don't hate Australia. I actually am very fond of Team Australia because, like you said, we got into the test. We knew about these players. We're doing the BBL. This is not an attack on Australia. But we got to understand the situation. And I know for most of you, the cricket fans, you've been hearing about it for two years. You're tired of hearing about it. Well, this is the first time we watched this documentary, okay? Right. Gabe, why would Australia cheat in that moment when they usually dominate up against these people? They just won the Ashes. I mean, you can't lose sometimes. I will. I will uh, answer your question, and then I want to go back to something you said earlier. So, first, why, Nick? You're right. Okay, there's. Don't tell me that this is just something that they busted out. Oh, because they happen to lose one game. You know, 
after the, the, the first two games were contentious. And remember, we haven't even talked about the Warner situation earlier on, which really got that match heated. So all of a sudden we're desperate. So we're going to turn to this. No, Te- cheating is a culture. All right. Everything is taught. Everything is learned. Now, was it Steve Smith's culture before he got there? The co- the head coaching staff? I don't know. But I can tell you this. And I guarantee you, okay, as sure as the fact that I finally, finally, finally got a win and ended that miserable losing streak that I was on, I can guarantee you that that wasn't the first time they've done it. And Stuart Broad alluded to what happened at the Ashes, all right? It's a culture, all right? I was an athlete. Listen, every team, every athlete, every everybody pushes the envelope. You try to find more and more, and what happens is eventually that line becomes a, 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 a shade of gray, really. You know what I'm saying? And it's an organizational a, a culture, which is why I understood why the head coach had to step down. Because if you're a head coach and you don't know what's going on, then that's on you. That's on you. Your job is to know, okay? Do I blame them as much as no players? No, because ultimately the players were the ones carrying it out, but it's an organizational thing. So that's why I'm glad that Australia as an organization said, no, this is unacceptable. Also, the pressure. Bro, To my the prime minister came out and said something. That's the equivalent of our president. Can you imagine Trump saying anything about a uh, 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 baseball? I don't think Trump even watches baseball. He has no idea. Or basketball. All he's going to say about Packers and basketball is shut up and dribble. But he don't know nothing about games or cheating scandals or anything. Let's just be real. Let's just be real. The kind of pressure these guys were under is insane. The head coach said one day he wasn't stepping down. And by the next day, it, it, he said, I had to after speaking to my wife because they're my wife and kids are getting threatened at school. Like the entire nation came down on them. What I meant to talk to you about earlier when you said, oh, it's the difference between an international sport and a, a local sport like the NFL, I disagree. What happened with Long, Lance Armstrong and the Tour de France, all right? All the doping allegations were out there. And how long did it take for that to come down on him? Because we refused to believe he was cheating. Or what about Michael Johnson and the Olympics, right? Doping allegations out the wazoo. And we refuse to believe. What well, an I'm allegation is-, is different than the evidence. The South African players said, we are pretty sure that they were doing something, but there is not that video proof. You really think Australia's going to come down and ban them for nine to 12 months? Stop it. There is a huge difference between domestic sport and international sport because now you don't I agree at New England. You don't just represent the Bronx. You represent right. all of America, and the right. whole world is watching right now. You right. can't tell me there's not a difference. There's a huge difference between the two. I and they got caught. That's the biggest thing. Once Armstrong got caught, he was ostracized. Everyone just turned their back on him. But before that, we need this win. We have to keep this win. We're going to sweep right. it under the rug, and that's right. not okay. But there's a huge difference between domestic and, and international and, sports. And, and again, think about other teams. Was it the Japanese or the Chinese team that had, like, Literally 28-year-old women, 30-year-old women going in and competing in the in, in the Olympics with the uh, with the with the juniors or whatever to get the medals. There's a whole documentary on that. There was also another documentary about the Russians. It's on Netflix. You gotta watch it about the doping allegations of the whole Russian team. But I mean, the craziest thing is they did the cheating and they weren't in a losing streak. They no if, if the pressure if you it's it because sounds it's a like culture. you're making an excuse for them. Maybe no, I'm saying it's a culture. It harder, but- if you just won the Ashes for the millionth time, if you right. are the dominant Australia team, if you're the team that's won like five World Cups or something like that, and right. I think ODIs or whatever it is, if you still have to feel the pressure where we have to cheat after one loss in a series, I don't want to play for that. I'm sorry. I If I feel that kind of pressure, and when you when we listen to the other former captains for Australia, the former players, right. um, Alan Border, all these different people talking – now, I'm not super naive to not think that there's not a chance that other teams have cheated too, right? That of not course. everyone's perfect. But when they are disgusted themselves with what was happening, that makes me think that it doesn't matter the amount of pressure or anything. Like, that, that's just jacked up. You go in right. there and you have to cheat. This, this, this country hasn't won on their own home soil in like 40 years. Right. Right. No, I hear you. I, I see your point. And I'm not making an excuse. What I'm explaining to you is it's a culture. Why is Australia known for sledging? You're going to tell me it's just in their blood? It's in their DNA? We just sledge? No, it's taught. 
Why? Because it's gamesmanship. It gets in other people's heads. You understand what I'm saying? It, it, it's all, it, it, it's, it, it's taught. And I guarantee you pushing the envelope is taught. Whether it's Sophie Ecclestone knocking somebody down with a shoulder check. No, I'm joking about that. I had to go with, with, with my Sophie Ecclestone uh, drive by there. But, you know, you always push the envelope. And I'm just saying that for us to believe that it was the first time Stop it. Let's just be candid. That's not happening. They just happen to get caught at that point. Now, what I want to review is go back to set up why this was so big. Like you said, uh, South Africa had never won. There was some chirpiness going on between both sides. Fop. Fop is the quietest guy ever. And Fop was like going back and forth. Rabada. Why did Rabada get in Steve Smith's face? Well, because just earlier there was a big altercation in uh in the in the tunnel between Warner and um oh who was the other player that happened i think and that was de cock i think that was game two i think game, robata's game action happened first no no robata happened game two gave the correct us if we're wrong gave robata was almost a response sure robata was game one because then they were reviewing it during game two match two and then for day three before that is when they had the hearings and they they took back i could be wrong it, 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 I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But what I'm saying is, obviously, there was a lot of chirpiness and bad blood between these two sides. And here's the thing. For such a gentleman's game, those of you that tell me, oh, I don't understand Warner's action. I don't understand uh, 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 Robotics action. You've never competed. All right. It's easy to say, oh, yeah, it's a gentleman's game. When you're in there in the heat of the moment, your blood gets gets hot. All right. Your blood gets hot. You know, you're 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 you're, you're most athletes after game one are playing with some kind of ailment, all right? Bottom line, I did have played, my kids are athletes, you're hurting, you're sore, you're tired, and you're out there, and yes, it's, it's, I understand the emotion. That's what I'm saying. My whole thing about this whole documentary was, I don't even blame Warner, which they really made Warner look bad in this, in this, in, in this documentary. I was shocked that he was attacked like that by, you know, uh, Again, uh, I'm not trying media. to be a jerk, but did they make Warner look bad or did Warner make himself look bad? I mean, you the worst thing to have happen is have your ugly moments projected for the whole world, right? right. They had mentioned in, in match one that in the in day one of that first or whatever day it was in that first match that there was a lot of Australia chirpiness, a whole lot of right. trash talking, which I'm fine with, whatever. That's you want to talk about game, I'm right? ugly, I'm fad, I'm slow, whatever. You know, banter is banter, whatever. But they were giving him a lot of the business. And then I can't remember exactly what DeCock said to Warner. They got him all fired up. But my thing is, and I'm not saying Warner was there to chirp, but I mean, come on, he's the vice captain, right? So right. if you're able to dish it, but you can't take any of it? Like, come on, man. Like, that was my biggest problem with that. I want to talk about Robota real quick because I like Robota. He's got a great smile. He's a great bowler. But I did not like the, his response to the space thing. He basically acted like he had no idea. He, as far as you know, he didn't do it. Even though the tape was right there, I don't. I still don't think I did it. We saw him, and you were mad about this because it was against CSK in the IPL where he bumped into Foff. Foff ran into him, and we had a little back and forth about this or that. So it's not the right. first time we've seen this space thing right. in a sport like cricket where even we know you can't get in that personal space. I was not fond of the way he reacted to it. I mean, right. he was beast out there on the field, and he was getting some wickets, and he was right. hard to compete with. I wasn't a big fan of that, but I don't think Warner put himself in the best light. And what they say, like you said, this this was kind of a low blow, but they said that some of the guys on the squad were like, we're not even sure we want Warner to come back. And he's the vice captain. He took himself off the team WhatsApp. Here's yeah. my thing. The media was in the tunnel. So the media knew what happened in that tunnel. All right. They caught him at the bar drinking by himself or whatever during this whole thing. It's a bad look. But the fact that he took himself off the team WhatsApp, that came from inside, Nick. That means some player on that team went and right. glad to the media, which tells you where's the trust here? We're supposed to listen. You and me are best friends. All right. I will defend you to the death. All right. Afterwards, I'll go back and tell you how wrong you are. But to the whole world. Now, nah, that's my man. What are you talking about? I'm a, And that's how I should be if you're a teammate. All right. After the after the game, when the in the locker room, that's what what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. We're gonna go ahead and say, "What were you thinking, bro?" But in front of the world, I don't know what you. That's my man. I don't know what you're talking about. You're supposed to fight. You're supposed but to. But if be he's there. if he's not their man, though, right? That, and I don't want to turn this into a game. 
Again, I like David Warner from what I see so far. I tell my kids this, I tell my students this, I tell my friends this. I don't care what person what Gabe did to you. He's done nothing to me. I judge Gabe based on how he interacts with me. I have nothing against Warner, but I uh, you're right. They definitely did not paint him in a good light here. Um, some of the guys, I love the fireness of all these commentators talking. You got Shane Warren, Michael Holding. I can't remember the other guy. I think he's from South Africa because he was very South Africa uh, biased with some of his opinions, which is fine. And then you had Alan Border. You had these different guys and giving their views on, on the commentating side. I love the things that Michael Holding said. I love this guy because he does not care if what he's, his opinion is going to offend you or if it's popular or not. He says exactly what he wants to say. He says, I don't like the, the excessive celebrations. I don't think there's a place for it. I think it's okay to get excited. I think it's okay to show some energy, but you don't need to go overboard. Just go out there and bowl again. Yeah. I love the fact that whatever Michael Holding is saying, I can know that is his true opinion because this guy's yeah. not going to hold anything back, but he's also respectful. I felt like of all the voices, and I get some are from Australia, some are from South Africa. Of all the voices we saw from the commentators when we're getting their thoughts, and they were very honest, I like yeah. how Michael Holding was kind of that neutral side, but he was just kind of blasting both sides and saying this or that. I really liked that perspective of this of this uh, documentary. I liked how they went into the history. Let me say one thing. It's very random, but it just kept bugging me. When they got, I think his name was Mark Nicholas, whatever the, the narrator guy, the host guy of the documentary was, they were obsessed with doing these wide pan shots. Like he's like three miles away sitting on the grass and the camera's three miles away and he's talking. You can't even see his mouth move to it because they want that wide open shot. Was that just me or was that kind of awkward? Like I've never seen a documentary where there were so many wide, far away shots. It's so it was, random. But it kept bugging it, me. It, it was shot kind of weird now that I think about it. It was shot kind of weird. There were some weird shots in there. And I tell you what, the editing really kind of drove me crazy because at times the way they, they they clipped it, right? I'm like, you're almost skewing what the players and even the 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 announcers are saying. Okay. They again, I don't know who produced this documentary. I'm trying to look it up right now. If it was Australia. It was, uh, super super sport star sports. Yeah, superstar story. Is that an Australian company? Is that a British company? South African? Let let us know. But literally, a documentary, uh, uh, uh this is why uh, um in America, for instance, Michael, um, oh, what's his name? Michael, um, the swimmer, Michael Moore, no, Michael Moore, right? He's a documentary, uh, uh, specialist, right? But this guy sets people up and I see the other side. Like I remember in the bowling for Columbine, the way he set up, uh, what's that famous, um, um actor's name that was the president of the NRA, um, oh, Charleston Heston, exactly. And a lot of people didn't like that. So I understand that they can view it and skew it a certain way. And like you said, they made it sound like all the South Afri African uh, uh, um, uh, commentators were just coming down on them and were not acknowledging the fact. The only one that they get, that it made it seem like they had a a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, unbiased opinion, I should say, is Michael Holding. But yeah, they made the comment. It was like weird. And look, it's something that happened. This could not have been an easy commentary, uh, uh, commentary, uh, or documentary, I should say, to, to put out. It could not have been, and it could pr probably couldn't have been popular. But what I enjoyed was the media. I enjoyed. This is what media is supposed to do, and this is what media is supposed to like. Look, this is what happened you know, unapologetic. We have to kind of look at it. Like I said, I gained a newfound respect, not just for uh, the media in Australia, but for Australian fan, cricket fans and, and, and their own Australian cricket board because they took a step that they could have easily said, look, the ICC said two-game ban is a two-game ban. We're going to keep it pushing. Winning is that important for us. They didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? That would have been an easy thing to do. It's like, look, we don't have power to do to, 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 right. Here, I the ICC is in charge of it. I so I like that they did that. You know what I mean? Not and just that, but they gave Bancroft, the guy who's got the camera proof, they gave him less months of a ban. than. The, and I get it. Leadership. They went after the leadership. And it's crazy because Steve Smith, he was asked, like, I'm not going to step down. I'm going to take my two-game ban. I'm not going to step yeah. down. And then when Australia came in and said, no, you're done for the year, like, I like Steve Smith. I keep saying I'm not trying to trash anything. I love Smudge. They did what they did, right? They did what they did. They made the decisions. I don't believe for a second he had no idea what was going on. He took responsibility. 
At least he was there next to his man Bancroft after it happened. But the I fact mean, that Warner wasn't up there with them, I'm uh, like, what are you thinking? Whoever Warner's PR team is, by the way, fire him. If you are David Warner, you fire him immediately. I hope you already got rid of all those people that were in your ear telling you not. Nah, you don't need to do anything because you know all these guys have their own PR team. They have when you're that big a star, at least here in America, LeBron has his advisors. OK, all these guys got people in their ear, their agents. Somebody should have told them, like, bro, this is the ugly look. You need to be up there with them. I think that's why the media really I got on top of them. Just don't care about that look. But back to Steve Smith, this guy, I mean, he needed a wake up call. He really did. He's he's a captain of the test team. He ju- his team just got caught cheating in the middle of a series. And his response is, I'm not going to step down. I'll take my two-game ban, but then we're going to keep moving. you got to learn the lesson. You cannot cheat. It's not like you said like, uh, like a racial slur, which is you know a horrible thing to do. It's right. not like you uh, took some guy's $5 bill. You cheated in the middle of a se- – and the crazy thing about this, imagine being a cricket fan, whether you're South Africa or Australia or wherever – and it's in the middle of a test series, and you're hearing all these reports for a different thing, a different day. I'm not going to resign. I have to resign because my kids are getting death threats. I have to go home and protect my family right now. I'm talking about the coach. I mean, it's just craziness what happened, and it all happened in a matter of days. All this stuff happened. Um, and we can talk about Mitchell Stark and his reverse swing. Do we have to sit there and assume was Mitchell Stark part of it? Was it just a coincidence that his reverse swing was was rocking? Pat, Pat Cummings had a great, was it day two or whatever it was, mm-hmm. or, one, or second innings of day one, I think it was. Right. I mean, it's easy to assume that they're all cheating, but I would love to know. I didn't get it from this documentary. What was the aftermath? What did they uncover? Did they investigate and figure out this had happened in previous series or they didn't want to mess with that noise? Did they come out and admit, yes, we did this or this, or we didn't do this? This was a one-time minute. I would love to know what the investigation was afterwards, if there was one, to figure out. Like with the Houston Astros, we found out that it could have gone as far back as 2017, 16, or whatever it was. Right. I want to know more about that. Because, again, I don't think they wake up day two or day three or match three, whatever it was, and they say, let's bust out the sandpaper right now. Right. I don't think it happens that way. And, I mean, I don't know. There's just so many thoughts. It was an interesting documentary. A lot of good information. It got me fired up for both sides. But, I mean, I think it's a, it was a huge wake-up call for some of those players for Australia. Right. And hopefully they learn their lesson. The sad part is that for, if you don't think about Sandpaper Gate, think about how great, uh, how great a series this was. Like you right. said, South Africa had not won at home for, what, 40-plus years? I mean – and you got Fop. You got, uh, was it AB that went off or was it Quinn Nagar? One of them went off in one of the games. Oh, yeah, AB went off. Absolutely AB went, went off. off. All those things will be overlooked by just the, 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 like you said. And to me, all the side stories, like the one, you know what really makes me, I, this is why I hate umpires. You're too stupid to see a guy doctoring the ball five feet from you, but yet not even five feet. Oh, sorry, the band. The band is too loud. We can't hear the Knicks. That's an issue? That's an issue. But a guy is doctoring the ball. Literally, you can hug him. And you didn't see that. That's why you're worthless. All, all those umpires are worthless. Umpires are absolutely worthless. And if they hadn't been caught on TV, Nick, I guarantee you, they would have never, ever, ever suspended anybody, even though there was plenty of proof. I'm glad you mentioned the band thing, because if the band thing is such an issue... Who let them in with their 14-piece orchestra? They came to the game. They wanted to have some fun. They brought their instruments. Your security allowed them in. And then you're going to tell them because they're being – I don't think you like the music because they're being too loud. You can't hear the possible nicks. Then why are they allowed to bring the instruments in the first place? That kind of annoys me because if I'm a paying customer and I have my, my, my instruments, what's in that bag? Oh, it's a it's a tuba or it's a saxophone or whatever, a trumpet. Okay, go ahead and come in. Now you tell me because I'm playing too well and people can hear my music that you're gonna kick me out or kick my instruments out. Like that to me, that that was weird. That was a really, really weird thing. I'm not sure if music is usually banned and they snuck it in, if they had some kind of rogue, you know, mission where they brought it in with someone on the inside. That was a really, really weird thing. But you're right. This series was amazing. There was one point, I think, was it the third match or the fourth match where South Africa Africa won by like a bazillion runs for crying yeah. out loud. You had guys they were talking about that had come back from a long time. 
Uh, Morco, I think, was one of them. And I can't remember the other guy who had great performances for South Africa. Uh, it's, it's just unfortunate the way it went down, right? It's completely unfortunate. The cheating is absolutely ridiculous. But a year ban, a nine-month ban, that's pretty steep. I mean, that fits it the is. crime right there. It is. And at least I think that has allowed him. You kind of see it's funny. You see right now in the IPL, you see uh, South African players shoulder to shoulder with uh, um, uh, 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 Australian players, right? Josh Hazelwood was on CSK, the same team as Fah Duplessis. You know what I'm saying? You see, you know, British players, even though Stuart Broad said what he said. It wasn't just Stuart Broad. Joe Root came out. Your man Root came out and said something. I was proud you know of that. Man? I was like, ready to go, Joe. And you know what? Because Australia handled it right. And not the ICC, but Australia's cricket organization has handled it right. To this day, Houston Astros, absolutely not one player was punished, Nick. Not one. Not they fired that, they're whining because people are giving them a hard time. Really? You're mad about that? And what did Major League Baseball do? Nothing. Nothing. A gag order basically like, don't anyone complain about it or you're going to be suspended worse. Or you're going to be suspended. Exactly. So it's one of those things where I think that people have been able to move on from this scandal because, you know what? it w- The punishment was handed out and it was addressed. But when you don't address it and you just let that continue to fester, listen, Houston National aren't going to get any respect in a long time. And I don't know if you realize what's going on right now, but right now two of their high price guys that were on that team want no problem, no parts of it. All right. Um, what's the center fielder's name from the Astros? He just opted out of his contract. I think he's about to sign with the Mets. The Mets. Houston, you lost one of your stars to the Mets. What does that say? It's a toxic organization. Because they were receiving all kind of harassing from every single other organization at every other stadium. And I don't think those guys were truly accepted this year in baseball because they never faced a punishment for their crime. You know what I'm saying? At least Steve Smith, that's got to be hard, bro, to go up there and say, yeah, man, we cheated. And, you know, like you said, the hardest thing is you don't realize how it affects my father. They're talking smack to my old man. How embarrassing was that be? You know what I'm saying? This other coach, the head coach is talking about, Man, my wife and my kids are getting threatened. Like, to go, they faced repercussions. Not one Houston Astro faced repercussion outside of coaches that really weren't on the field and weren't actually doing the banging on the cans and, and, and the stealing of the cameras and all that stuff, you know, the sign with the cameras. And that was the most thing. So I think that Australia handled it well, and that's why we were able to move on, which is what my final thoughts are. I still love Smudge. OK, you know, he's one of my favorite players. He performed for me the other day. I love it. OK, I've never had an issue with Warner. I just didn't realize what a big part Warner actually played to it and how he was the one that ultimately took most of the brunt of this because he was non apologetic almost. You know what I'm saying? And almost like it's other. I didn't realize that they don't give you that in the show. The test, by the way, uh, 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 this you get from the sh- um, from this documentary. But I didn't realize uh, uh, winners, uh, uh, um, what he played or the role he played in there. And finally, Bancroft, bro. I mean, bro, you know how you're immortalized. There's the poster with Michael Jordan dunking on like three. You know, you know how certain sports moments immortalize. I don't care what Bancroft does the rest of his career, Nick. What do you think he's going to be remembered for? I mean, it's unfortunate. It, it really is. The thing that drives me crazy, and I, I don't want any family members or any spouses to get hate or anything like that. I don't want any of that. But the thing that astounds me is you made the conscious decision to cheat. You made the conscious decision to cheat. And I'm a forgiving person. But when you make that decision to put yourself above someone else and to get that edge and don't tell anyone about it, and if we – you think if they won, they're going to feel bad and say, okay, we cheated, we're sorry. No, they're going to try it again the next time. When I, I have a hard time moving on from a cheater. I like Smudge. I like Warner. I don't really know much about Bancroft, right? But you made that conscious decision. It's it's not a good look. You you can't really ask for sympathy when you no one forced you to cheat. No one forced you to cheat. The captain, the vice captain, they're in on it. They're saying, let's get a little edge on the bowling. I mean, it's crazy as opposed to just saying we beat him in the first match. Let's beat them again. If we lose, we lose. Whatever it is, we're going to try our hardest. That's my biggest takeaway from it. 
is it's hard to forgive a cheater. I'm curious for those who are not Australian fans. Are you still mad about this? Are you frustrated about this? Have you gotten over like Gabe was saying since they got the, the suspensions? They took it out. They took it out on themselves. Let us know what your thoughts are. This was a very interesting documentary. Overall, I enjoyed it very much just for the information I got from it. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out some more content we have here on Boring Reviews. And until next time. That six runs. Don't cheat.